Greetings, uh, family of God, in Jesus' name. Uh, thank God for his faithfulness, for his grace upon our lives. I want to thank God for this opportunity, you know, to share his word with us at this particular time. Uh, shall we quickly pray? Father in heaven, we thank you. Thank you for your word is yes and amen. Thank you for your grace upon our lives. Thank you, God, for giving us the privilege, O oh Lord, even to draw to you and to tap from your word at this period of time. Thank you for that which you have for us today. We pray the mighty name of Jesus that as you have blessed us, O oh God, already in our worship, Lord, we pray as we come together even to watch, to listen to your word again. We pray that you will free your mind unto us. We pray that you will help us, O Lord, to receive the understanding of your word. And that this word, O God, will do us good as we yield to doing. Blessed be your name, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, from last week, the last time I speak about uh, after the flood, what did you see? Today, by the grace of God, we want to look at the second part of this message. And it's all about after the flood, what did you hear? After the flood, what did you hear? What did you hear? Uh, looking back into the life of Noah, during the time of flood, we understood that Noah saw something different in his own time about God. And how God, does God relate with him even after the flood? And like we have said, that a flood for me, the passing, the time we are passing uh, on at this period of time, the pandemic period, so would be a kind of flood to us in our own time. So let us hear what God said to Noah and his response, what he had during his own time. And I take us to the book of Genesis chapter 8, and it's from verses 15 to 19. It says, Then God spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the heart. You and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you, birds and cattle and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Verse 19, every animal, every creeping thing, every bird, and whatever creeps on the earth, according to their families, went out of the earth. So the, from this passage, we read how God spoke to Noah. God gave Noah a command. God gave him an order. He, he, he sent him a word. After the flood, you know, initially Noah sent out a raven at a time, and at another time, after waiting for another seven days, he sent out a dove. And the message brought back to him was a message of hope, a message of restoration, a message of new things coming up. And from there, because of Noah seeing the greatness of God, you know, God now spoke to him. God said to him, it is now time to leave the heart. It is now time to start the new life. It is now time for a new beginning. After that, he came out of the heart with his family and the animals that were in the heart with him. He followed the guidelines given by God. He followed the word of God 
spoken to him to the letter. He obeyed. He heard God speaking. He did not hear the noise around. He did not listen or hear, you know, any other voice that may be saying negative things to him. He listened to God and he heard God louder and clear. And he followed what God has commanded him to do accordingly. As we are coming out of this flood of pandemic, obedience is the key. We have to follow the guidelines according to the law of the land. At the same time, we follow God's guidelines. We follow the instruction that we receive from God. God brought his people out, out of the heart at his appointed time. As the water decreased continually until the top of the mountain was seen and until the waters had receded completely from the earth. You know, until this pandemic is completely receded, until everything is dry up, we have to keep on listening to God. We have to keep on watching now. We have to keep on hearing from God. So at this period of time, it is important whatever we hear is very, very important. When we look at the word of God in Psalm 29, it talks about the voice of the Lord. It is important to hear the voice of the Lord God Almighty at this period of time. Why? Because the voice of the Lord is over the waters. Psalm 29 verse 3 says, The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. So, so many waters, many troubles, anything, or so clever situation that we might be going through or that we may be ahead of us, you know. The voice of God is over that. It's more than that. It can come to us louder and clear than we could ever sing. So it is very important for us to hear from God at this period of time, to hear his voice. Instead of hearing the voice of the stranger, instead of hearing the voice of the um, I mean, negativities, instead of hearing the voices that will pull us down or draw us back from God, it is very important at this period of time, you know, to wait. Noah waited uh, until God gave him his word that it is now time to go out. So it is very important for us to wait at the presence of God, to wait on God, to receive from him. Remember, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That is the book of Isaiah. It says, if we wait upon him, he will renew our strength. We will mantle up with wings like eagles. When we walk, we will not be weary. When we run, we will not faint. So it is important for us to take note of whatever we hear at this period of time. So in verse 4 of that Psalm 29, it says the voice of the Lord is powerful. That is another reason why it is important for us to hear from God. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Instead for us to hear, you know, those words that will pull us and that will make us feel low, instead of listening to those words that will discourage us from uh, possessing our possessions, from entering into the promise of God, from taking the promised land that God has proposed for us, we need to listen to the voice of God because the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar. The power in the word of God, in the voice of God, is so powerful to the extent that it breaks the cedars. You know, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. Whatever is the situation, we speak the voice of the Lord into our situation. We speak the voice of the Lord into the pandemic. We speak the voice of the Lord, you know, into whatever it is that is going on around us. And by doing so, you know, the Lord God of heaven will show his majesty, will show his greatness in our lives. So he makes them also skip like a calf. 
Lebanon and Zion like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord defies the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord is powerful and is able, you know, to put asunder whatever it is that the enemy may be bringing across our ways. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the dead give birth and strip the forest bare, and in his temple everyone sees glory, glory. The Lord sat and throned at the flood. So at this period of this pandemic, this flood of pandemic, you know, the Lord seated on the throne. The Lord is never dethroned. He's always there. He's always available. He's always ready to speak to us. All we need to do is pay attention unto him. So what did you hear? Did you hear God speaking from his throne of grace, of mercy at this period of time? As the Lord sits and is king forever, the Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. I pray that this period of time, the peace of God that passes all understanding that we need, the Lord God of heaven will speak his voice of peace into our situations and calm every storm in Jesus' name. Uh, likewise, you know, in the book of Hebrew, the Lord spoke about his blood, the blood of Jesus, how powerful, how majestic it is, and the work that the blood is able to do in our lives cannot, you know, be described. The Lord God of heaven's word is so powerful and his blood is so mighty. It is through his blood that we are cleansed of all our sins that we are redeemed unto the Lord. God's presence was with the Israelites and his presence was revealed by the cloud. If we cast our mind back to part one of this message, looking at what did we see, you know? The people of God were led by his presence during the time of the flood, during the time of Noah and even the time of Moses, when God was leading them out of the land of Egypt into the promised land, he was with them in the wilderness. So they followed his leading and obeyed. So whenever the clouds lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out, and whenever the clouds settled, they set up a camp at the Lord's command. So Moses and other elders, as at that time, we hear from God and pass on the message unto the people of God. And so they followed the Lord's command. It does not matter how long they were to stay or whether for two days or whether a month or a year, they waited and were led by God. Remember Noah waited and he waited until the Lord gave him the word to leave the heart. They were not moved by, by sight, but they were moved by faith. They were not moved by the fear of the giants that we see on our way or around us. We are not to be moved. So, but what happened to them? Some did not enter his rest because of faith. Some of them were unable to enter into the rest of God because of faith. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 to 2 says, Therefore, since a promise remains of eternity of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they had did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who had it. So it is very important 
for us to allow the word of God that we are hearing to be missed with faith in us. Like I said earlier, the key is obedience. And if we obey the word of God, we will not allow or give room to unbelief or to disobedience. Some did not enter into the rest of God because of fear. Some did not, you know, get into that promised land because of unbelief. What did you hear? If we want to get into the promise of God, if we want to receive the blessing of God, if we want to enter into His purpose, we need at this period of time, you know, to obey His word as we are hearing from Him. It is very important for us, you know, to hear God, not only to hear Him, but to obey His word to the letter. The Lord Jesus Christ said in the book of Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30, it says, Come unto me, all ye who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come unto me. For us to hear from God, we have to come to Him. We have to understand and acknowledge that He is a living God, He is a true God, He is able, more than able, He is the God of all possibilities. He is the only one that can do the impossible in our lives, in our, in our time and in our land. The situation we are passing through is more than what we can handle by ourselves. It's more than what we can fight. It's an unseen battle that we are fighting. It's an unseen enemy. And you know, if we depend on God, if we come to Him, He is able and more than able to sort out our cases and to settle us on every side. He said, I will give you rest. It is important for us for us to hear from God, we have to come to Him and we can receive rest from Him. He says, take my yoke upon Him. If His yoke is heavy, if His yoke is more than what we can carry, He will not ask us to take it upon, upon ourselves. He will not ask us to come and, and take that kind of yoke. But He says His yoke are easy and His burden are very light. All He's asking for us to do is come to Him. And coming to the Lord, sitting at his feet, listening to him, you know, experiencing his presence is very, very important. So if you are out there today and you are yet to come to the Lord, he's giving you an open invitation, an open chair, you know, for you to accept him into your life, into your situation. We don't know that what is going to, you know, to come after this, uh, there have been lockdowns in some places again for the second time. But you know, if we come to the Lord at this period of time, we hear Him. He will give us direction. He will give us the guidelines of how to go about it, if at all anything else happens. Well, we are not praying for that. We are praying for the Lord God Almighty to make this pandemic to, you know, completely wipe out of our land. But at the same time, Going forward, it is very important for us to listen to God, to hear Him giving us His guidelines, to hear Him giving us a way out, to hear Him leading us in His way. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Um, something happened during the time of the Israelites in their journey, you know, at a point, they got to Mount Oreb, and that is in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, from verses 6 to 8. So they encounter God, and after they encounter God on Mount Oreb, they thought they have arrived. They were at ease. If you have time, you read from that book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1. 1 from verses 6 to 8. 
it says that the people of God, you know, they thought they have arrived and they sat down and they were at ease. Are we are already at ease after this flood or the pandemic? Are we already at ease? Are we feeling too much at ease? The Lord our God spoke to us in Ore, saying, You have dwelt long enough at this mountain. Turn and take your journey and go to the mountains of the Amorites, to all the neighboring places in the plain, in the mountains and in the low land, in the south on the sea coast, to the land of the Canaanites, and to Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Ephraim. But what happened? The Lord said to them in verse 8, See, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them and their descendants after them. So the Lord is saying to them that they have long stayed enough on that man's foreign. What is God saying to us this period of time? Are we hearing from him? They have relaxed, they took some rest and almost forgot about the promised land where they were heading to us. After the flood of the pandemic, brethren, it is not yet time to relax. It is not yet time to draw back. It is not yet time, you know, to be carried away with the, 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 the opportunity we have, you know, to stay back in our various homes during the lockdown. It is time to, to see God in more. When you win a victory, then you have to fight for another battle ahead in order to be more victorious. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, the word of God says we should be sober, be vigilant, be sober-minded, be alert, because our heart first read, the devil is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for anyone he can defy. So God said to Moses to tell the people to move forward as they stayed long enough on the mountain. You know, mountain of complacency, mountain of complaints, of disobedience, of unbelief, of regrets, of murmuring. We have stayed long enough on that mountain. The Lord is saying to us that we need to move on. And by first listening to him, hearing from him, we will not hold back, we will press forward. And he's ready to lead us as he led his people in those days. Paul Apostle said in chapter uh, Philipp, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, he says, I'm pressing on, I'm pressing on. He said, brethren, I do not count myself. To have apprehended. He said, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal, the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So let us hear from God. If we hear from God, it is more profitable than hearing from mere men. While moving forward, consistency is very important. Steadfastness, we must avoid distractions and complain. Not murmuring, but, and we should not lean on the past, but rather we stay focused. We stay focused. The Israelites remember those things that they had in Egypt. They forgot about the outstretched arm of God. His hands that were not short to deliver. His ears that are not deaf to hear them. He said in uh, Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 3, he says, Call unto me, yeah, Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 3, and uh, I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things which you know not. So let us trust him absolutely. Let us give him our hands. A songwriter says, Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. And as we do so, we will be victorious more than conquered because we will hear directions from him. 
who will receive, you know, the guidelines, the guidance, the divine guidance from him. Hearing God is very, very important after the flood. What we did here. And before we pray, in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6, verses 24 to 33, and chapter 7, you know, the people, the, the lepers, they had a kind of opportunity to enter into the land of Syria. But the Lord God of heaven had called the, the people of Syria, you know, to have a strange noise, noise of war. And they thought it was the, the, the people of Israel that were coming with great army unto them. But it was the Lord that caused those noise to happen in the camp of the enemy so that they can give way for the people of God and the, that the, the promise and the purpose of God can come to fulfillment. I don't have time to read or relate that story more, more than this to us. But what I'm saying is, when we hear from God, if we are in Christ Jesus, we'll be able to differentiate ordinary noise from the voice of God. It is very important. So we need the designing spirit or the gift of the discernment to be able to design the kind of voice we are hearing, the kind of words we are hearing, the kind of report that we are hearing at the end of the flow. What did you hear? May the Lord bless us and continue to help us, you know, to hear from him always because his voice is powerful, his voice is mighty, and he will lead us to the end in Jesus' name. Uh, I will now ask for prayer. Praise the Lord. We thank God for those messages that we have had, even last week and for this week, talking about the flood. What did you hear? And uh, what Noah has already had. So we are going to pray briefly. Uh, God is still speaking today. Are we listening to his voice? If we are listening to him, are we hearing from God? Noah listened and heard from God. And that's what actually has helped Noah in his own time to come out victoriously from the flood. Amen. Uh, we are going to read briefly from the book of Jeremiah chapter 7, 23 to 24. And the word of God says, But this command I give them, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk in all the way that I command you, that it may be well with you. But they did not obey or incline in their hear, but walk in their own counsels and the stubbornness of their evil hearts, and went backward and not forward. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your word in our life. Thank you because your word is powerful. Your word is yea and amen. Lord Almighty, we just pray at this time that you help our life, O God, to listen unto you and to hear from you, Lord. And as we are hearing from you, O Lord, as we are listening to what you are telling us, O God, as an individual, as a church, as a community, and as the whole nation, we just pray in the name of Jesus that the power of obedience you will grant unto every one of, of us, O God. Father, we have learned about Noah, that Noah listened unto the, unto the Lord, and he heard from the Lord, and that's actually what has helped him. Father, we pray in this time of pandemic, O God, that we are coming out of it. Father, help our lives so that we listen unto you, and as you are listening unto, unto you, help us to obey your commandment. Father, we want to use this time to pray for our leaders. Lord Almighty, help them, O God, to listen unto you, Lord. And as they are listening unto you, help them, O God, whatever they heard from you, O God, whatever they hear from you, Lord Jesus Christ, help them, O God, Lord, to put into, into practice, O God, to put it into use, O God, so that we might come fearlessly, O God, from this pandemic in Jesus' name. Lord Almighty God, we want to pray every spirit of fear that may, that, that may want to wear, wear us down 
Father, we pray that it will not prosper in our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, faithful Father. Lord Almighty God, as we look unto you, our help coming from you. Lord, in this time of pandemic, oh God, Father, as the pandemic is being eased out, oh God, please continue to help us, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Help us to stand firm in you, oh God. Help us to walk consistently in you, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, faithful Father. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Enough for me. 
I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm fine, I'm fine. Right. Why do you have cake when you're going to draw something? Actually, I'm going to make something. Make something? What are you going to make? I'm going to make a boat. Boat? Mm -hmm. I like boats. Have you ever been on a boat? No, I love to go on a boat. I've been on a boat and most of the time it's really great, except if there is a storm. Storm? Yeah, it makes you get really scared. Scared? Mm -hmm. I don't like being scared. Being scared mm -hmm. isn't good. It's not good. And there's a Bible story about Jesus stopping the storm. Jesus stopping the storm? Tell yeah, me the story. He was, he was on a boat with his friends and he stopped the storm. I'll tell you the story. Tell the story. Jesus got into a boat and his followers went with him. A very bad storm arose on the lake. The waves covered the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. The followers went to Jesus and woke him. They said, Lord, save us, we will drown. Jesus answered, Why are you afraid? You don't have enough faith. Then Jesus got up and gave a command to the wind and the sea. The wind stopped and the sea became very calm. The men were amazed. They said, what kind of man is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. I like that story. What do you like about the story? I'll make you a boat. I like that. Um... At first they were scared, the followers of Jesus were scared, mm -hmm. but then afterwards they weren't scared anymore because, because the storm stopped. Yeah, it did. Why did the storm stop? Jesus told it to stop. Mm -hmm. He did, didn't he? Because Jesus is all powerful. Mm. Yeah. Even the wind and the sea are bearing. Even okay. the wind and the sea are bearing. Okay. But did you notice that Jesus was sleeping when it was storming? Yes, Jesus was sleeping. Why was he sleeping? Wasn't he scared? No, he wasn't scared because he's all powerful. Truly. Yeah, and he wanted to show his followers that he was powerful and they didn't have to be scared just because there was a storm. Do you ever get scared? Mm, yes, yeah. I'm sometimes scared. If I'm alone, if I'm alone, I feel scared. Um, I'm, I'm scared when there's loud noises like thunder, sometimes people shouting, people shouting angry, mm -hmm. and when people say horrible things, yeah, it's not nice. Bullying, bullying. Mm -hmm. Not nice at all. It no, doesn't make no. you feel scared. Sandra? Yes, Fox? Sometimes I get scared of coronavirus. Oh, we all get scared. But you know what, we don't have to be scared because Jesus is with us and we can yes. ask Jesus to help us not to be scared and to protect us. Sandra, can yes. we ask Jesus to protect us? Can we pray? Yeah, yeah. let's do that. Let's pray and ask Jesus okay, to protect us. Okay, let's pray, let's pray. You pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you that we've learned that you calm the storms. And Lord, we know that you can calm the storms that come up in our life and make us scared. And we ask you to protect us and help us not to be scared. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. I'm not scared anymore. I know Jesus is with me. Jesus is with you, just like his followers. He's protecting me. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. And just like his followers were scared, but Jesus came out and protected them so they weren't scared anymore. No. They were amazed. Yeah? I'm amazed. <laughs> Jesus is amazing. He is amazing. And there's your boat. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Sandra, for my boat. Thank you. I always remember the story that Jesus was I always with remember the story. I'll never be scared if I know Jesus is with me. Bye, Sandra. Bye. Bye, Bye. 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 See you soon. Bye. Bye.